going back to what you just said uh, about uh, putting uh, two different institutions in front of the same model and uh, yielding different answers, right? I think a gentleman from Voya uh, uh, talked about uh, that entire panel was uh, focused on uh, how AI will um, augment human capabilities that, and that um, in the near future, if, uh, if you are an exceptional professional, then you will be even more exceptional with the, with the help of AI. So the, the, the kind of the whole alpha generation, I, I think it will, uh, it will probably get more exciting, but more exclusive too, because you have to be trained and you have to have that, all of that experience. But if we pivot back into more kind of a uh, lower uh, level of, um, of application. So let's talk about, for example, wealth management systems, right? So I think though there were a couple of analysts yesterday that were um, saying that the AI would be a great tool to help with um, either an answering the, the, uh, the helping with the retail investors or uh, potentially uh, providing uh, portfolio construction help uh, for uh, for. Uh, bigger masses of people. So uh, w what do you see in that area? So w wealth is is tricky um, because the customer is typically unsophisticated, mm -hmm. right? Like the most common question clients show up and, and want to know from an advisor is, will I be okay, right? Well, generative AI ain't answering that question, right? Because what does that mean? Um, and this is where the, you know, the both the blessing and the curse of of this new technology is the implicit assumptions, the the you don't know what you don't know dimension of things, just like the please and please and thank you example, right? We don't actually know exactly why, and how that makes that difference, right? Um, and so it's it's all about asking the right question. So I think. Um, it can be tremendously useful if I'm trying to, you know, to, to reduce low value added calls to contact centers about, you know, what, what is my, how do I, how do I execute this transfer or how do I open a 529 account or, you know, those, those kinds of executional kinds of things, but, you know, it's not going to provide portfolio advice. It's, you know, it, it can, I think it has tremendous application to empower advisors, um, you know, to help them. I think the best use case is to help advisors understand product, right? We have so much product out there. No advisor ever will understand all the product that's out there. And so we live in this world where end consumers are getting suboptimal product because the advisor is only picking from what they know. Um, and so... I think we'll we'll see lot we are already seeing lots of lots of work going on in the KYP know your product space. Um, but I think for now it's going to be more about powering ad advisors number one and streamlining the basic blocking and tackling of client service. Yeah, I 100 percent agree with that and that is the number one use case is that kind of advise and the support you know where do I find this document? Where do I fill out this form? Uh, who can I talk to about this topic, right? Those are those are the easy ones. Um, oh, a neat one, sorry. Describe my, describe this statement to me. You know, I, you know, I get a, because the, 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 um, the generative piece, it can look at numbers or look at charts and explain in human language, well, what, sh what message should I be taking from this? Mm -hmm. That, that's a, that's a neat one that will add value. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and to your point about it, not telling you where to invest and how, right. Uh, going back to the question you asked matters. Uh, one of the things that we did in this little class was I asked everybody to write down one question they wish they could ask an AI. And, uh, three people said, what are the next winning lottery numbers? And, uh, you know, of course that would be kind of the low hanging fruit. Right. But what we talked about was, you can't ask it that because if you do, it's going to say it's a completely random selection and there's no way to know that. But you can ask it what numbers are most commonly paired together in winning tickets. You can ask it what numbers most commonly show up on winning tickets. You can ask it which days of the week are the most common large lottery jackpot winning numbers drawn. And then you can put all that together into a new question and it will generate 
a set of winning, potentially winning lottery numbers for you. But if you just ask it straight out, it's going to tell you it's a random number and I can't answer that. Right. So that goes to the point that Amy was making is that's why the value of the knowledge worker that's sitting there talking with the human is so important because they know what's real and what isn't. And they can also help to craft those questions to get answers that allow you to make informed decisions. Yeah. Well, I hope they come up with some college courses to train our kids on that, because that certainly sounds like a necessary skill going forward. 